Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video. I am Baptiste Lambert and today I will present our paper at Asia Crypt 2021 uh, which is called Strong and Tight Security Guarantees Against Instacall Distinguishers and this is a joint work with Phil Ebborn, Gregor Leander and Yosuke Todo. So the main topic is um, block ciphers. So block ciphers are one of the main ways to build symmetric encryption and the idea is to uh, generate a family of permutations such that to compute the encryption of a plain text M, um, we will simply choose a key which will select one of these permutations, and then the resulting ciphertext C is simply the image of uh, M through this permutation. So an ideal block cipher would be a random selection of permutation, and uh, this is quite hard to do. So in practice, we try to build block ciphers which, approx which uh, approximate um, this ideal block cipher. So one of the ways to do so is to use a key alternating block cipher. So instead of designing the whole uh, set of permutation all at once, we will first design a round function f and a key schedule. And this key schedule will take the key k, derive some sub keys uh, k0, k1, and to kr, and then to encrypt, we will take the plain text at k0, uh, k apply the round function f at k1, apply the round function f again and again until the end, and we obtain the cipher text. So most, if not all, block ciphers these days are uh, key alternative block ciphers, and uh, one of them is, for example, AES. And so we want to study the security of this block cipher, so how far do they differ from a random uh, set of permutations. And one example to, to do so is integral attacks. So I will introduce them with an example on uh, AES, so it's a very well-known uh, integral attack, but the idea is that um, we will generate a set M of 2 to the 8 plain text which have the following structure. So uh, we set each of uh, the uh, bytes of the plain text to be some constant, except one byte, um, the first one for example, which will take all values. So this leads to 2 to the 8 plain text. And we will encrypt this uh, set of plain text with three rounds of AES, so resulting in 2 to the 8 ciphertext. And something we can see is that um, if we take the sum of all of the ciphertext, so when I say sum, uh, I mean the XOR of all of the ciphertext together, then whatever the value of the key that was used in the three uh, round AES, this sum will be zero. So each byte will sum um, to zero. And this is not really um, a behavior that uh, we would expect from a random permutation. So this is a uh, distinguisher, so this is something that distinguish a block cipher from an ideal block cipher from a set of random permutation. And the important part, uh, important part here is that it's true for any key. So in general, the framework of integral attacks is to find such a, uh, such a set M of plain text such that the sum of the resulting cipher text is always equal to zero with probability one, no matter the value of the key. And obviously, the set needs to be uh, non-empty non and also to not cover the full uh, input set. But it's something that um, dates back from quite a while now. It was introduced by Knudsen uh, with higher order differentials. It was then refined a bit, especially with delta sets. So sets a bit like the previous one, where some bytes are constant and other take all values. And um, I will talk a bit about it later, but there are some links with the ANF of the cipher. So with the algebraic representation of the cipher. And these days, um, the most common way to study integral attacks is to consider the division property introduced by Yosuke Todo a few years ago to actually find this set M. So, <coughs> um, integral attacks are, uh, the goal of integral attacks is to find this set M such that the resulting sum is zero. So if we want to argue about the security of um, a block cipher against these attacks, well, we need to show that no such uh, set uh, M of plain text exists. And um, to do so, so we need to take a closer look at um, how we can describe a block cipher. So something very general is that for any Boolean function, we know that we can represent this Boolean function with its algebraic normal form, so it's an F, um, which is simply writing it as a polynomial over F2. And so for a block cipher, a block cipher is not just a Boolean function, it's uh, essentially a keyed Boolean function. So now we have a key, and instead of having just a coefficient lambda u in F2 in front of each monomial, 
and we will have uh, a, p a polynomial pu which depends on the key k. So this is how we will see our block ciphers now as key boolean function and we have the ANF given as um, the sum of some PUK times uh, some monomials um, x to the u. And um, so something very useful um, to uh, study uh, block ciphers when seeing them like this is uh, the notion of algebraic degree. So the algebraic degree is essentially just what is the degree of the highest monomial in X that appears in the ANF. So we are only considering the monomials uh, in X and whatever the highest degree monomial appears in the whole ANF, then this is defined as the degree of the block cipher. And um, so to show that um, this monomial X to the U appears in the ANF, it means essentially that the corresponding key polynomial is non-zero. And one way we could show that this um, poly key polynomial PU is non-zero is with the following lemma, uh, which is a very well-known result, um, which basically states that we can compute this uh, polynomial PU by doing the sum over all x uh, uh, lower or, or equal than u, where lower or equal for vectors is defined as just all coordinates are uh, lower than uh, or equal than the other. And so if we do the sum over all of the x uh, lower or equal than u, then we uh, obtain uh, pu. And this looks very close to what we want for integral attacks. And actually, this is one of the ways to uh, build integral attacks. So if we can show that the, uh, the algebraic degree of uh, block cipher is equal to d, then for any u of weight larger than d, the key polynomial pu will be zero. Otherwise, it wouldn't be of degree d. But if this uh, key polynomial pu is equal to zero, this means that the sum of uh, all of the x uh, lower or equal than u uh, of the resulting cipher text is equal to zero, which is exactly what we want for, in, for an integral attack. So we can define the set M as a set of all x lower or equal than u, and now we have a set M for which if we take the corresponding cipher text, they all sum down to zero. So a necessary condition we want for a block cipher to be immune to integral attacks is obviously to have a high degree. And um, so estimating the degree of a block cipher is not easy. It was very, um, quite well known now to uh, obtain upper bound on this degree, but if we really, uh, really want to prove security, the first step would be to show lower bounds on the algebraic degree. And this was considered quite hard until uh, last year at AzureCrypt uh, 2020. And so last year at AzureCrypt, uh, we actually, the same author, showed how to compute lower bounds on the degree of block ciphers. And also a few stronger notions. And um, I will need to describe a bit um, what we did because uh, our work this year strongly relies on the techniques introduced in this paper. So the idea is that we have our block cipher E and uh, we can write its ANF and if we develop the key polynomial PU, it basically results in um, this uh, expression. So the sum of some lambda UV times KV times X to the U. And so this is of degree D. If we can find a U uh, of weight D, such that lambda uv is not zero. And ideally, for a block cipher, we want to show that it's of, of maximum degree, which means degree n minus one. And so there is not a lot of choice for this vector u, uh, because there are only n uh, vectors of weight n minus one. However, for v, um, there is a lot more freedom. So again, we are um, in the context of key alternating block cipher. So we have this round function, and between each round function, we have a key addition. Um, so when we build block ciphers, we use a key schedule to derive this round function, but to um, show this uh, lower bound on the degree, to basically show, try to show the security of this block cipher, we would work under a slightly uh, stronger assumption, which is that we have independent round keys. And um, more specifically, in the work of, uh, at AsiaCrypt last year, we didn't need the first and the last key, so we are only considering the keys um, in the middle of the ciphers, and we consider them all independent. So now our monomial KV is defined as, um, well, the following expression, so um, monomial in, in K1 times a monomial in K2, etc. And um, so we need to do two things. We need to be able to show that a given lambda uv is different than zero and we also need to choose um, which v uh, to use so which uh, vi uh, to use 
to uh, actually compute this lambda uv. So the first question was uh, answered at Eurocrypt last year uh, using basically a variant of the division property, which is uh, a mathematical way to uh, show some things about the degree and the monomials appearing in the NF of a block cipher. And what we did last year essentially comes down to, okay, how do we actually choose um, the um, a value uh, the vector v so that we can actually compute this um, coefficient uh, lambda uv in practical time and so yeah we can compute this lambda uvs and by doing so we can actually compute uh, some lower bounds on the algebraic degree and with a bit more work uh, we can uh, even prove some stronger notion of just the algebraic degree called minimum degree and max degree monomial property which i will not describe here but even the stronger notion, so the max degree monomial property, was not enough to prove uh, to prove true resistance against integral attacks. What our paper last year did was prove resistance against only a subset of integral attacks. And moreover, um, the bounds that we gave and the resistance, the partial resistance that we showed, was only true for a given number of rounds R. We did not provide any arguments for a larger number of rounds, knowing that, for example, the degrees maximum are round. So this was another problem. And last, um, computationally, it was still quite expensive and uh, took a lot of time to compute. So our contribution um, this year is to actually improve um, all of these reports. And um, I will mostly focus on proving actual resistance against integral attacks. So. Let's come back to our initial problem. So we want to uh, show that there is no set M of plain text so that the, uh, the resulting sum on cipher text is equal to zero. Uh, we show that if the degree is high enough, then discover some form of uh, set M, but not all of them. So if we look um, a bit closer in, in a bit more details, if there is an integral attack, if there is such a set M so that the sum is equal to zero, it actually means that um, the key polynomials PU are uh, linear uh, dependent. So if we wanted to show that a given block cipher is uh, resistant against integral attacks, we would need to show that all of the 2 to the n polynomials PU are linear independent. And this seems very hard because um, so each polynomial can also be, uh, also be uh, developed as a polynomial, so some the sum of some lambda uv times kv, and uh, well, each uh, polynomial has about two to the n coefficients, and we have two to the n polynomial, so we will need to compute two to the n times two to the n coefficient, and show that the following matrix is uh, full rank, which um, when you consider modern block ciphers where n is equal to 64, for example, uh, example it's a very large number and it's absolutely not doable in practice. So we need to do something a bit smarter. And um, to do so, we will simply use a whitening key. So we have our block cipher E, uh, which depends on the key K. And uh, what we do is considering an augmented cipher where we just add a whitening key, so a, a key K0, before the actual block cipher. So we have the ANF of uh, our block cipher uh, EK, which uh, is the sum of some pu uh, times uh, x to the u. And now we also have the ANF of the augmented block cipher, which is the sum of some um, qv times x to the v, and qv now are polynomials in both the key k and the whitening key k0. And the main theorem that we show is that if we consider only one output bit of the block cipher, then um, by showing that all of the polynomials P, E, I are linear independent, so the polynomials in the original block cipher, then all of the resulting polynomials in the augmented block cipher, so the block cipher with the whitening key, are linear independent. So why, why is this useful? Because the polynomials P, I, P, E, I, are the polynomials associated with um, the vector E, I, which is defined as um, one in each coordinate epset coordinate i which is set to zero and there are only n vectors of this for, of this form so if we are able to show that n polynomials are linear independent then only by adding a whitening key we show that all of the two to the n um, resulting polynomials are linear independent so now we reduce the work from two to the n to n polynomials 
So this was only for one output bit. Uh, a block cipher obviously has more than just one output bit, it has multiple output bits. And an attacker could um, try to see if the sum of some of this output bit is zero, but also try to sum, for example, linear combination of output bits. Um, so we don't just need to show that all of the output bit verifies the theorem, we need to show that any linear combination of output bit verifies this theorem. Which means that for any non-zero uh, beta, the inner product between beta and uh, ek verifies uh, the previous theorem. So this is just a one bit, uh, one bit, uh, one output bit function. We need to show that all of these functions verify the previous theorem. And again, there are two to the end of this function, so we cannot do it very uh, naively. Um, uh, we need to do something a bit smarter. And um, it's actually very. Uh, uh, somewhat easy to see. So, yeah, we need to show that all of these functions, uh, so inner product of beta and the block cipher, um, verifies the previous theorem, which means that we want uh, actually uh, that all of the inner product between beta and the specific uh, specific n polynomials PEI, so associated with the weight n minus 1 vectors, are linearly independent. And so, what this means, since the P of PEI are uh, vectors of polynomials is that we only need to focus on n squared polynomials and show that all of these n squared polynomials are linearly independent, which is much smaller than the two to the n polynomials we had before. So we need to show that all of these polynomials are linearly independent. And to do so, well, again, these polynomials are expressed as some lambda u uh, v times k to the v. So we just need to find um, a few vi uh, at least n squared, such that when we write this uh, matrix, so the matrix of the coefficient of each polynomial, well, this matrix is full rank. If this matrix is full rank, then the n squared polynomials are linearly independent, and uh, we won. We actually proved um, uh, integral uh, resistance, so the resistance against integral attacks. So, yeah, in short, for a block cipher EK, we compute about and uh, to the four well chosen coefficient uv, so that the previous matrix is full rank. And if we are able to do so, we show that um, the block cipher, when using the weightening key, uh, fulfills the integral resistance property, which means that the block cipher is immune to integral attacks. And we can compute these lambda uvs using what uh, we did last year at EgeCrypt. Um, however, a small caveat is that. Um, it was still uh, only using the work from EgeCrypt last year um, was a bit slow. Uh, it was still very um, computationally hard, and um, even if some result could have been achieved, just doing it naively wouldn't work. Essentially, the issue is that to uh, compute these lambda UVs, we need to count the number of solutions in an MILP problem, so a linear programming uh, problem. And in general, this is quite hard. So what we did to improve this is essentially try to reduce the number of solutions to these problems. And uh, a big observation was that if we are working on a block cipher which has a worldwide linear layer, so a linear layer working on uh, bytes, on uh, nibbles, um, we can have equivalent representation of the cipher. And more specifically, um, if the cipher should use an S-box S, we can instead use an S-box um, S prime, which is defined as the following, which is just a special case of a fin equivalence. Uh, so that, uh, assuming independent hand keys, like we did in the beginning, uh, we have equivalent ciphers. So now, instead of uh, just one cipher, we have actually uh, quite a few of them, uh, about 2 to the 22 if the S-box is over 4 bits. And what uh, we did was design some heuristic criteria to pick which representation to use so that the number of solutions in the MILP problem um, would be rather small, so we can actually enumerate this solution and so obtain our result, which is computing these lambda UVs. And so we designed these heuristics. We also um, show how to actually choose V in a smart way so that we have a lot of lambda UVs which are automatically um, equals to zero without doing any computation, just by, de by design. If um, we choose V properly, we know for sure that some coefficient will be zero in the matrix, which heavily reduce the number of coefficients we need to compute. And also using some symmetries in some block ciphers, we can also reduce the number of coefficients to compute. 
And so a notable example is that uh, we are able to get results on the block cipher craft, while last year we were not able to without this improvement. So to give a summary of what we showed, um, here are the number of rounds we are able to prove on, on several block ciphers. So in the second column, I'll give um, the number of rounds for which we know the longest integral at, uh, integral distinguisher. And on the last column, um, I show the number of rounds we were able to prove to be resistant against integral attacks. And in red, um, you can see all of the results which are uh, tight, which means that um, there is no improvement possible. We know that um, the best integral distinguisher is one less round that um, the number of rounds we were able to prove to be resistant to integral distinguishers. So you can see that for uh, gift and uh, present, there is still some margin. It doesn't mean that there is necessarily an attack on, uh, for example, 11 round of gift. It's just that computationally, we were not able to uh, show that 11 rounds of gift is uh, resistant to integral attacks. It may be possible, but uh, there are still some improvements uh, we can do here. So um, I showed how to uh, well, prove resistance against integral attacks, how we improved um, the computational aspect, and a last point is um, what about more rounds? So I, I show that a given number of rounds is immune to integral attacks, but what happened for more rounds? You would despite obviously that it works, and if R rounds are immune, then R prime rounds are also immune. But in practice, it's a bit more complicated. So if we just consider the algebraic degree, and we take two very simple functions, so the two functions here, f and g, um, both of these functions are of degree two. But if we compose these functions, even with adding a key in the middle, and the resulting function is of degree one. So what we can see is that the algebraic degree in general is not preserved. And um, so we cannot give automatically give guarantees. However, in the paper, and I uh, recommend you to see this if you are interesting, uh, interested in the details, we can actually characterize when the algebraic degree is preserved. Um, now, if we look at integral resistance, uh, so uh, if we uh, show that um, a block cipher EK is uh, resistant against integral attacks, then in this case, it's a lot easier uh, because we are able to show that for any permutation f, adding this permutation at the input of the cipher also results in something that is immune to uh, integral attacks. And this is very easy to see, it's just that if we add a permutation at the input, then at the end we ob also obtain a sum of, um, uh, of a, uh, some uh, set, so f of m, of uh, some linear combination of the output bits, and we show that all of these sum are um, non-zero, uh, which essentially means that it depends on the key. So for integral resistance, everything happens uh, nicely. If we are able to show that uh, our rounds of a cipher are immune to integral attacks, then any number of uh, uh, any higher number of rounds is also immune. So to conclude, uh, uh, there are still some um, ways to improve our work. So it's still quite a bit intense, uh, intensive on computation. So we would like to make it faster. We would like to design uh, even better heuristic and understand these uh, heuristics better. And we would also like to make it more usable because for now, for each block cipher, we actually need a few tweaks here and there to um, actually uh, really improve um, the speed and actually have practical results. So there are still some more works to explore. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for uh, your interest in this talk, and I uh, hope to see you next week at the live uh, talks at, uh, for Asia Crypto.